Good morning. Welcome to Nigeria Now on TOS Television Network. My name is Adesu Walsui. And as always, on Nigeria Now, we'll be looking at uh, major stories across Nigerian newspapers. And when I say looking at, I mean actually getting an analyst opinion on those stories. And to wear the shoes this morning is Sagir Ibrahim. Good morning, Adesu. Good morning, Sagir. You're welcome to the show. Thank you. Okay, so we'll be starting uh, with the Daily Trust. And I'll be starting with the banner headline on the Daily Trust newspaper. It says, many schools shut as insecurity disrupts learning in four states. Bandits convert classrooms to restrooms in Zamfara. Uncertainty in Katsina, Kaduna, Niger redeploys boarding students. We must salvage our children. That's coming from experts. And to complement that is the banner headline on the daily independent newspaper it's on the insecurity as well it says again buhari gives service chiefs matching order worried bandits attacks becoming more persistent six super tucano aircraft on test flight and that's from magashi mm. so I, I want you to take on this how would you react to this first the the one from you know um Denver state and then the go the, the presence you know warning um service chiefs and say look this is getting out of hand you need to do something about it okay so first of all i would say uh, this is the first time in a long time that we've seen the government actually take, you know, a really decisive and direct approach mm. towards um, tackling the bandits and taking the fight to them most, uh, most especially. Yeah. You know, this is a, is a very, very, it's the first in a very, very long time. So first of all, I must give kudos to the government mm. for taking the bold step to say, okay, we are ready for you guys now. It seems like we've been giving you guys a leeway, a little bit. You've mm. been feeling relaxed and you've been feeling like what you're doing does not have repercussions. So let's give you a little bit of the heat so you can feel it and then you have everything to know whether you want to continue doing this or not now on the part of the Zamfara state um, governor you know cl shutting down schools I, I believe it's just um one of the measures that they want to put in place to as much as possible reduce reprisals because of course you know the bandits then have been hit and um, aside the bandits then being hit a lot of students if are not at home as at that time the bandits can come back in terms of okay we're going to abduct as much students i might see a lot of catastrophe befalling the students as well as their parents. So this is just a measure put in place to say, okay, now we've taken the offensive, let's as much as possible protect our people mm. so that it is just the bandits we know we have to deal with and we are not dealing with any casualties. Okay, but I, I read in the news yesterday uh, uh, the controversial Islamic cleric Sheikh Gumi yes. telling um, the federal government that um, the supposed um, I, I don't want to say win by Nigerian military, mm. you know, the surrenders and everything by, by the terrorists. It's going to make things worse. According to him, the bandits or the terrorists are battle ready and they're not going anywhere. How would you react to that? Okay, first of all, I don't know who Sheikh Gumi is representing. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he's a spokesperson of the bandits. But what I can say is, like I said earlier, this is the first step the government has taken. Yes. Uh, the first you know, really decisive steps to take an offensive to yeah. them. Uh, the second is, this is a new approach. Mm. So let's see how it pans out. All of the other ones we've taken in the past, you know, what good has it brought us? So the government has decided to take this step. Let's see how they react. And afterwards, we will know how to chat a course going okay. forward. I believe that's just it. All right, let's move away from that to the front page of the Nigerian News Direct. And it's on um, strike, you know, the NARD strike. And it says, only illegally recruited doctors excluded from monthly salaries. That's coming from the federal government. Strikes truce with Johesu as NMA calls on NEC others to prevent a sector's collapse. And going back to the Daily Independence, um, the headline is replicated there, but he says, just on uh, top right there, Dr. Strike lingers as Ngige alleges campaign of calumny against federal government insists no medical staff is owed salary. Okay, so... I, I must say, first of all, that the federal government's um, resident doctor's debacle is a thing of international embarrassment. Okay. I mean, we saw the way the Saudi government openly came out recruiting our doctors, yes. you know, through an examination. If they pass, they will be leaving Including the, the UK as well. It's exactly. This is, a, this is directly coming out to say we're about to drain your doctor, your country of your best doctors. 
and the government couldn't do anything about it. Because the doctors the worst, themselves are willing to go. It, that even makes it worse when you have citizens who are not even willing to be patriotic because mm. they believe there is no country to be patriotic to. Mm. It's in a situation where a citizen finds himself doubting if the country will be able to do as much for him as he is willing to do for the country, then yeah. there's a problem somewhere. Mm -hmm. So the, the government needs to take steps to ensure that, number one, Nigerians regain their trust in them. Number two, skilled and even unskilled, you know, Nigerians have the belief that if for any reason I have the means of doing business or doing anything that will boost the image of my country, my country will be able to recognize it and, you know, reward me for my loyalty. But that is not the case here. We see the resident doctors, are, you know, dragging for ordinary 5,000 naira. <laughs> I beg your pardon, mm. but driving for 5,000 Naira hazard allowance, COVID-19 hazard allowance, and it's not paid to them. Till now, a lot of them have complained that in some states, they are paid percentage salaries. Some of them are paid 60% of their salaries. Some of them are paid 40% of their salaries. I don't want to mention any states. Mm -hmm. We see some of them complain, you know, that their chief medical directors in the various hospitals where they work rule them like they are dictators. Mm. You can dismiss a doctor and nothing happens without following due procedures to the establish or laid down rules. So these are some of the things they are fighting for. Yes. And the government is not willing to pay attention. So why would, should we blame them if they decide to down their tools? Because as a matter of fact, it's not like where they are working is actually bringing them any sukkah. But, but do you think that, because Ingege is saying that they're not owing any doctor's salary, mm -hmm. but I know doctors have come out over time to say we haven't been paid months of you know, salaries. And then he's saying, okay, it's only illegal, illegally recruited doctors that mm -hmm. are owed salary. The contrast, what do you think about okay, it? I, you see, it's, it's one thing to say you're not owing doctor's salary. And it's another thing to say I have paid all the doctors all that is due to them. Mm. So you might not be owing them salaries. If you pay them 60% of their monthly salaries or 40%, you can come out and beat your chest to say you're not owing salaries. You know why? Because you paid salaries that month. Was the salary complete? That is the first question. Mm. Second, have you paid their allowances? Mm. That is the second question. Mm. So have these allowances been paid? Were they paid their salaries in food? Are they being paid what is commensurate to the work that they put in? These are salient questions we need to be asking to ensure that, yes, these doctors are satisfied. Because if you don't do so, these doctors are going to continually be vilified and it will look like the government is right. Let's ask the question, okay, if they are being paid their salaries, then why are they on strike? Ah. Okay, that's the question that for the federal government exactly. and doctors to answer. All right, moving away from that, um, let's look at the front page of the Punch newspaper very quickly. And I will be looking at the banner headline as well, and it's on VAT collection role. It says, no going back on bill. Lagos insists Adamawa backs VK. No point staying action. Court has dismissed FIR's stay of execution. That's from Lagos. And... Um, Adamawa Hills reverse court judgment says it will improve state's revenue. Now that this has been a back and forth with, mm. you know, I think the reverse state, Lagos state government and the FIRS they say, look, you have to pay VAT to the FIRS. And then the states are saying VAT should be paid to the state to improve the revenues. Uh, as you can hear from Adamawa State, what is your take on you know, the back and forth? Okay, so first of all, I saw a headline yesterday where the River state governor, yes, Obike, said states who do not, who prohibit the sale and consumption of alcohol mm -hmm. should not benefit from rivers vat. Mm -hmm. I don't drink alcohol. Okay. I don't buy alcohol. But I understand his sentiment. Because I, I understand the reason why he should say we generate so much vat from the sale of alcohol, yeah. so much tax and revenue from the sale of alcohol. And then states who prohibits the consumption of this alcohol and even destroy and spoil businesses of those who sell alcohol in their state should not share from the VAT at all. Because if the VATs keep being remitted to the FIRS, mm. what happens is the VATs are collated and then shared across states. So it means even those states who prohibit the sale and consumption yes, of alcohol in one it. way or the other benefit from the VATs that River State is generating. Yeah. So it's understandable. And it is an understandable argument for a governor to say, look, I don't want my taxes going to the um, federal government anymore. These taxes are generated in the state. Mm. We have a state tax, uh, a state revenue collection right, yeah. board who are more than capable mm. to manage the taxes that the state 
generate. Yeah. Number one, it is going to boost the state's IGR. Number two, more monies will be available for development and infrastructural projects across the state. So I see no reason why this money should be going back to the federal, who will take a quota out of it, then spread it across the various 36 states. What about states that do not generate enough in terms of tax? That's the thing. Should, 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 should you think that um, um, FIRS is wrong to actually see um, VAT should be disbursed to them at, at the federal level? Because you did mention states that do not generate yes. enough. But it might be we need to balance you know, its revenues for different okay, states. To, to say it is wrong is something I cannot say because it is backed by the Constitution. Mm -hmm. But it's commonsensically, it makes sense for a state to generate VAT and use the same VAT to develop the same state. Mm. I don't see a reason why it needs to go up in the first place. Mm. So yes, they have a point. Now it is now left for the Nigerian judiciary to make the best interpretation of the laws that we have in the land and ensure that those who should be in control of the resources have total control of the resources. Okay, another headline that actually caught my eye, uh, it's on the Daily Trust newspaper, and um, it's just on the top left there. It says nine months after inauguration, Obaseki yet to appoint commissioners. Mm. Can he do that? Like, is, it, is, it, is it right to actually do that? Do you think so? Well, uh, for the president, I know it is expected that he forms his cabinet within 90 days of coming But this is office. nine months. But this is Nigeria, first of all. Wow. And we've seen on different occasions, you know, um, a gross breach of laid down protocols, procedures, and laws. So for him to not have inaugurated a cabinet for nine months, we don't need anybody to tell us that it is wrong. I mean, how will you be ruling as a governor without a government? Because yes. your cabinet is your government. And so you've been the sole administrator of the state, yourself alongside your deputy governor and let's say um, the legislative of the state, but he remains the chief executive officer. A chief executive needs others to form a cabinet to work and he has not had that. For reasons best known to him, he has not done so, but it's been nine months. The various state ministries and parastatas need heads, they need commissioners, they need DGs. So if you don't put them in place to ensure that your government is up and running smoothly and precisely, if anything should happen and there is a breakdown somewhere, you'd be held solely responsible. So no, it is not right. It is definitely wrong. And you should do so as soon as possible. So but how do you think that would reflect on the people and, and the economy of a do state that at this point, nine months after, he still doesn't have a cap? It is definitely going to affect it because there's no commissioner running the different ministries that are supposed to lead revenue generation for the state. So there will be no minister of commerce, there will be no mini uh, sorry, commissioner for commerce, commissioner for finance, commissioner for all the, of the various you know, ministries, including the civil service, mm. because as we know, a lot of indigents in that state are civil servants. Yeah. If they are not teachers, they work in the various ministries. So if there is no commissioner to spearhead the activities and the affairs of those ministries, I mean, there's no gain saying what's going to happen. All right. Um, I think that's it for today's episode of um, Nigeria Now here on GOS Television Network. And as always, you can follow us across um, all social media platforms as TOS TV Network across social media platforms, TOS TV Network on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course you can subscribe to TOS TV Network on YouTube so you do not miss out on amazing programs that we have there for you. You can also stream Nigeria Now and other programs on our website that's www.tostvnetwork.com. My name is Ade Suwalsui. See you tomorrow.